Welcome back to your OCHEM 1 lecture. We are right in the middle of chapter eight, or uh, that is chapter nine if you're in the second edition, chapter eight in the third edition. And we are talking about addition reactions for alkenes. And the next one we have is a pretty simple one. It's uh, hydrogenation. And it's exactly like it sounds. You basically just add two hydrogen atoms across the double bond. So the two new sigma bonds you form are just CH sigma bonds. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's you basically consume one molecule of hydrogen for each carbon-carbon double bond that you add to. And basically all that happens is the alkene is converted to the corresponding alkane. This happens at a uh, very high efficiency. Like this is definitely one of the 100% yield reactions that you can get. Um, and it requires a metal catalyst. So platinum, palladium, and nickel all are pretty good at this. But basically you take a bed of the solid metal and you uh, pressurize the gases usually of the alkene and the hydrogen. And then just you know, over time, you know, it'll add hydrogen to the double bond and you'll get your alkane out of it. Uh, now, this addition, there's not that much to consider because it's not regio specific because you're just adding hydrogen to both sites. So you don't need to worry about Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov, but you do need to worry about syn versus anti. And as it turns out, uh, if you're forming stereocenters, the uh, hydrogens are gonna be added to the same side. They're syn added. And we're gonna see why when we look at, um, it's kind of the mechanism, but it's more like just the, the facts of this reaction will show you what that looks like. So yeah, so basically here, when you take this alkene, that's gonna end up being an asymmetric alkane with two chiral centers, you're gonna add the hydrogen atoms to, you know, to one side. So you could add hydrogen from the top and hydrogen from the top. That would give you this product over here. If you added hydrogen from the bottom, hydrogen from the bottom, that would push out the ethyl and methyl groups and that would give you this product. So again, you form two chiral centers and it's the enantiomers that you form because of the syn addition. Now, this is an exothermic reaction. So it's something that you might expect to happen spontaneously, uh, but it's actually very slow because the formation of the um, transition state for the normal reaction is just too too hard to do, basically. So even though it's an exothermic reaction, uh, it's too slow to be practical um, because of the transition state. Now, using a catalyst means that you go through a different series of steps, a different set of transition states, and those are all much lower in energy. So using the metal catalyst lowers the activation energy and makes the reaction much faster. So this is kind of the reaction mechanism here. This isn't something I'm gonna expect you to draw out on the test, but you should know this basically. What happens is basically the platinum or nickel or palladium metal surface uh, will bind H2. And on platinum in particular, like the distance between the platinum atoms on the surface and the hydrogen atoms in the gas, it's just perfect to kind of like pull them apart a little bit and you form two platinum hydrides rather than um, platinum, uh, rather than like a hydrogen. So it's sort of, it's what we call adsorbing on the surface. It just kind of like sits on the surface. And then the alkene also is gonna do the same thing. It's gonna sit on the surface and you could have a reaction where basically you form a new platinum carbon bond. And when you do that, one of the hydrogen from the metal surface that's adsorbed on the metal surface is gonna stick on one of the sites that's stuck off. And then at the same time, um, you know, just like the next step would be this hydrogen adsorbed bumps into this carbon and you form a new carbon hydrogen bond. And, you know, the catalyst doesn't change. The catalyst is just what enables all of this to happen. It's really good at taking electrons from the pi bond. And it's also really good at taking uh, electrons from the hydrogen gas itself. And because of this, it's like everything's kind of sitting flat on the surface. So things can only get added to the underside of the molecule. Uh, and that's why these hydrogen atoms are added syn in a syn direction. Um, yeah, and okay, so another thing is you would probably recognize this, but if you took a symmetrical alkene and you did this, so you have a syn addition of hydrogen on top, which would be here, or on bottom, which would be here. Um, these basically, um, these are the same compound, right? You can flip one on top of the other. There's, a, there's an axis of symmetry. So these are the same compound. In other words, these are meso compounds here. Now there are homogeneous catalysts that do this as well. So what we talked about before was heterogeneous uh, catalysts and, oh, this is exactly wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I meant to fix this on the slide before and I just, I forgot. Um, I'm gonna blame this one on your book here. So um, here, so a homogeneous catalyst 
is in the same phase, right? Think homogeneous solution. That means two things that mix together. Whereas heterogeneous does not dissolve. Those are in different phases. So a heterogeneous um, catalyst is gonna be something that, um, it, that's like the platinum surface that we were looking at before. You have your, your platinum metal, that's a solid. And then you have uh, the liquid around it that's containing, or the liquid or gas containing the hydrogen and the alkene. That's the reaction medium. They don't mix together. They form a heterogeneous mixture. So that's heterogeneous catalyst. Homogeneous catalyst will dissolve in the reaction medium. And you do that using what's called a ligand. So a ligand is just basically something that binds to a metal and it can make it soluble. Like, so this is Wilkinson's catalyst just does the same thing. Uh, as the what we were looking at before. This Wilkinson's catalyst has these phosphine ligands. So this is triphenylphosphine. Phenyl, of course, is a benzene ring. So this is basically a phosphorus atom that's bonded to three different benzene rings. Those benzene rings are extremely organic soluble. So this is a way that you can make a rhodium chloride, an ionic compound that you wouldn't expect to be soluble in an organic solvent. Because of these phosphine ligands, it actually is soluble in, um, in an organic solvent. So double check that again, homogeneous means same phase. So that's gonna be dissolved in the reaction mixture. Heterogeneous, different phase, that's gonna not dissolve. Apologies for this slide. Make sure to read it out of your book. Okay. Um, and yeah, and so this is just kind of like cleaning up here for the Wilkinson's catalyst thing. If you create one chiral center, you're going to create um, a mixture of enantiomers or a racemic mixture. And same thing with two chiral centers. Uh, but you just have to be careful. If you create two chiral centers, um, just check that it's not a meso compound. And you should be able to check from the beginning. If this is symmetrical, then you know that this could be symmetrical here, and that's going to be meso compound. Uh, now, what's really cool is, and this is the, the real utility of uh, the Wilkinson's catalyst, is if you use a chiral catalyst, then you can actually synthesize just one of the enantiomers, the R or the S enantiomer. So what you do is basically, instead of taking the triphenylphosphine ligands, you put a chiral ligands on them, okay? So instead of having three phosphorus groups here on a, on a phosphorus, now let's put a methyl group, a phenyl group, and then a propyl group, let's say. All of a sudden, when this phosphorus is bonded to rhodium, it's bonded to four different things. Rhodium, phenyl, methyl, propyl, four different things. That means it's gonna be chiral. So this is a chiral phosphine ligand. And what you can do then is that'll actually um, produce a, uh, uh, you know, it'll make only one of the enantiomers rather than a racemic mixture. So this is kind of like one of the things we talked about way, way long ago, all the way at the beginning of the semester when we discovered, uh, when we talked about initially um, chiral, chiral chemistry. And this is one of the most important reactions um, in terms of medicine that there's been, because we mentioned, you know, medicine, Oftentimes you have chiral centers and the medicine is only gonna be useful in one of those orientations. The other orientation might be a poison. So um, this synthesis of L-DOPA is kind of famous here for this exact reason. The chiral catalyst that we looked, on, uh, we looked at on the previous slide, you use that chiral catalyst and you can make just the S, uh, and, uh, the S version of this chiral center. And that S version is the one that's useful. Uh, in terms of L-DOPA. Uh, so that's, that's a really important uh, innovation. So that's one way that you can do that. Um, yeah, so there's a similar ligand here, which is called the, the BINAP ligand. Uh, you may recall this, we talked about different types of chiral compounds back in the day, and BINAP is uh, one of those because it can't, basically it would be symmetrical, but because it can't, uh, it can't rotate around this sigma bond right here, uh, it ends up being chiral. And so because of that chirality, um, you can actually do the same thing, um, making just one enantiomer with a pretty good uh, selectivity. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind is that you can use a chiral catalyst to produce a chiral product. Uh, and that's one of the more important things for, for medicinal organic chemistry as well. Okay, that covers hydrogenation. Again, not much to talk about with the mechanism. Basically, I'm not gonna, make you like draw this, but you should be able to recognize like, oh, okay, the alkene and the hydrogen adsorb on the surface. Then one of the hydrogens adds across the double bond. 
then another hydrogen adds across the double bond and the alkane is released from the surface. Uh, but that's it for the mechanism wise. So um, pretty short lecture this time, but uh, we got another long one coming up next. So uh, next up, I think we have halogenation. So I'll see you soon. <laughs>